So yeah, still not actually, uh, <clears throat> still not painting yet. Um, before I start painting, I always go through a checklist to remind myself which bits need doing, you know, because not, you don't need to do both sides of everything. You know, the, the carcasses that are butt against each other, you don't need to paint those sides. Um, and in the process of, of going through that checklist, I realized I'd, I've missed out a whole load of things. So <clears throat> back to the drawing board, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> That routing really caused a lot of dust. I've had the air scrubber on for about an hour, and it's still not uh, still not completely clear. I'm going to go take a break in a minute. Um, I just wanted to have a quick chat, really, about the uh, the, the process of cutting the, the dominoes for the shelves. We've got for the left and the right uh, single bookshelves. We've got a fixed shelf at the top, obviously. Um, which is just which just abuts against the uh, the top of the uh, the top of the carcass. You've got a fixed lower shelf. Now you've got a divider that runs between those two, so that's got to be reasonably accurate. And again, you've got a fixed that's the mid shelf. You've got a fixed lower shelf, and that's up about you know 500 mil from the base. And again, that's got to be the same both sides. Otherwise, it's going to be all wonky and shunky. So a little bit of fiddly marking out to do. Um, Again, a bit more involved, uh, the, the, the 12mm, the double 12mm carcasses haven't got the lip on the front yet, but they have been rebated. The 25mm end of the carcasses, end uprights, uh, haven't got the lip on and they haven't been rebated either. The shelves have got a lip on mostly apart from the top, you know, ooh, lots, to, lots to think about. Yeah, again, the, the depths of the domino mortises in the 12 mil, you don't want them punching out the other side, so you've got to do 12 mil here, but a 20 into the shelf itself, whereas in here you can just do a 15, 15. Uh, again, you know, lots of potential to go wrong. And one of the things that I really, really do appreciate when it comes to actually cutting the things is this, you know, this festival table. Uh, the multifunction table they call them an MFT. Um, I know a lot of guys think that it's all a bit of a bit of a joke. You know, it's just a table with holes in it. It's it's they are very expensive. Uh, they were a lot cheaper when I bought mine, and this is the the older model. Um, but for things like cutting these dominoes, I'll show you uh, coming across. But they're an absolute boom when we get to doing this kind of thing. Two little bench dogs. in there. This runs up against a stop. That comes down and that is square. There's, you know, there's, no, there's no arguing about this. There's no debate here. That is square. I know it's square because I set it up that way and if you set it up right it's square every time. And the beauty of this is that you can just edge this over. I've got a pencil mark on here. The centre line where the dominoes need to go. I put my domino machine on there, I can just tap this into place so the foot is right on that pencil line and I can cut my mortises and I know they'll be exactly square, dead on that line to the depth that I've set them. Uh, and you can just boom, 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 all the way across. Um, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And then at the end of it, just lift it up, take that off, and you've got your bench back. Uh, for a small space, they are absolutely fantastic, and I, uh, uh, I, I don't regret spending the money on this at all. As I say, I paid a lot less for mine back in the day, but uh, anyway, let's crack on. I've got, a, I've got a fair few to do, so I'll fast forward with this because it's not that, not that interesting watching me do it, but. Uh, Using this same technique, we can quickly and repeatably cut the mortises for the fixed shells in the tall left and right hand units. And then in the shells themselves, remembering to change the depth of cut where they attach to the 12mm carcass sides. Okay, 
time to let the dust settle. Then maybe, just maybe, we can do a bit of painting today. We follow a familiar and well-worn path for the painting. A water-paste acrylic primer undercoat followed by two coats of water-paste acrylic eggshell, all applied with a dense foam roller and left to dry thoroughly. Nice drying racks, by the way. So finally, everything is painted. Uh, took a lot longer than <laughs> it should have done. Uh, an awful, awful, awful lot of stuff to do. Don't know if you can see behind me, it's like a forest of <coughs> painted MDF. Um, but with that all done and all nicely dried, uh, I'm going to start. I'll be, we've, I've done the drill the carcasses for the hinge plates. And drill the hinge fixing positions, not just the, the cups, but the actual fixing holes. Uh, for the doors as well. So that's all done. So all the, you know, finally, I think all the most of the messy bits and pieces are, are out of the way. Um, I'm just going to start banging through the carcasses. There's only three of the base cabinets to do. Uh, so, and, and once they're done, there's not much else I can do with them. So I'll just get those out of the way because the bookcases are a bit more intricate. Um, the carcasses are like pretty much every other carcass. If you've seen my other videos, you'll have seen me how I make them. It's a, there's a base with a side two sides that lift up. The only difference with these is because we're having a single continuous top along the whole thing. Uh, it's a bit like British kitchen cabinets. You don't, whoa, you don't need, <laughs> took me by surprise, you don't need uh, a solid top. So what we tend to do is have um, a couple of rails sort of front and back, uh, which are then fixed into the uh, carcass with, with just dominoes and one screw. Um, I don't know if you can see, but uh, the, the, the domino mortise is quite close to the edge here. There's space to get a screw behind it, but not in front, so we just clamp that up nice and tight. Uh, and that usually does the job pretty well, so yes, minor explosions aside, it should be a fairly straightforward job. I'm just going to rattle through these. Uh, there's only three carcasses, so I'll just bang through those quickly. I'll probably fast forward here a bit, a bit um, because, you know, you've seen it all before, really. But I'll crack on with those now. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll know that I make cabinet carcasses with dominoes, plenty of glue and screws. And if you'd like that in more detail, please do take a look at my back catalogue. Here I'm just rattling through the two single cabinets and climbing the front and rear rails in place before fixing them permanently with screws. The 6mm backs are simply fixed in place with narrow crown staples, then the assembly unclamped and moved to one side so I can concentrate on the centre double cabinet. The centre cabinet is identical in construction, just wider, and we do need to be a little more careful attaching the top rails. We push home the rear rail at the left hand side so the domino engages fully, but at the right we leave it mostly out of the mortise for now. This gives us enough play on the width of the cabinet to carefully engage the right hand side of the front rail without pulling everything apart. Then both front and rear rails can be tapped home and clamped before the rails are screwed down permanently. So when it comes to getting the back on the widest one, uh, because it's so wide, it's 1300, whatever that is, I think I said, 51 inches, something like that, the top rail has a tendency just to dip down a little bit. So you've just got to be careful of that when you fix the back on. Because it's going to have a top over the whole thing, you screw it all together and it pulls it up nice and tight. You've got 36mm, an inch and a half there, 
or when you just got a single rail like this. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit on the thin side, so you're just going to make sure that you're just going to make sure that the top sits flush with the top of the rail. With the back fixed and the carcass unclamped, we can move it out of the way to give us some breathing space. I wonder what it was it was catching and then it was you.